but then um, I, I got the Portuguese version. It says that the old ladies are the ones that eat oh, blood snakes. Yes. yes. Because that was uh, a gluttony as opposed to ritualistic. Yeah. That really want, that, that like, that like, 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 like the taste and, and are well, hungry. It's not that they yeah. like it so much, but it's part of the... Yeah. And, right. And, uh, I, you know what I was wondering about this? About this, uh, well, they, the gender thing is interesting there, and, uh, oh, and it could be that, that there is some, either a role that the women had or that they, uh, just, I mean, I, I would want it to not only think about it in terms of their, their gluttony, but whether there's a particular role that they have as, as the old women. I mean, the old men are the ones who are the importance for warfare, and the old women. See, I, I immediately think of all the stuff I know about up in the North, where uh, it's the women, when the prisoners come in, who decide uh, which ones get adopted, which ones get married, and which ones get uh, set for uh, ritual slaughter. Uh, and so where I see the woman here, it's not that I'm trying to deny that maybe the women are, are gluttonous or something, but, but I, I actually go for, I would immediately start asking about what is, this is probably not accidental that they're allowed this place. Because I know that in the North, that the, 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 the order in which food is handed out or the, or the place we eat is extremely important. This is not random. This is not just a messy crowd. So that there might even be some special thing that's tied up with it why they are the old the old women which is peril of the old men another thing i just have to say these things because i think they're interesting that i wondered about in terms of his writing whether it ever occurred to him and he's got this description i'm sorry to say this but i have to i think it's interesting he has this description of these wonderful bodies they're so healthy but i wondered if it ever crossed his mind not my mind but his mind whether he ever thought and that they don't eat the brains whether he thought they ever asked him, well, are they healthy because they eat all the time. Did it ever cross his mind? That, 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 I mean, he says this. They are so wonderful looking, and yet they are constantly doing this eating. And I just, I just, you see, the reason I, this is not an impossible question, is that if you have read French medical texts, you're, which I have, I read endless pediatric texts, French medical theory is all based on the relationship of food to the body and the the diet is, is is constantly referred to uh, therapeutically and in terms of setting up the different uh, uh, humors. It's all connected with that, and, and uh, so it, it, it. I mean, he doesn't say it, and maybe he well, never that's thought it. The he said the weather was nice. Yes, that's right. Yes, that's true. But it is what I would say is it must be a hidden. It's a. It, it's a hidden, it must be a hidden. He downplays that aspect, right, of the nutritional thing. <laughs> well, and rightly so. It's, it's, it's horrible. But it is, but, but you see, whereas we wouldn't think of it that way at all. I mean, it, it was just, I just, it, if you, if you uh, at least I don't think we would think about it at all. I think it would just be uh, impossible. For, it, it, it's so much part of the medical um, habit of the time. It, it, most of the, so much of of, of what physicians do is related to diet. Anyway, it, maybe it's something that is unthinkable for him, but it, it is a natural question to ask after that description uh, because the doctors not only discuss it in terms of climate, they discuss health in terms of A, miasma or healthy climate, B, food. Anyway. For what? Which is another topos for? I see, okay. Not, as you weren't suggesting that this would be a, a, a reference on some level to, but could, I mean, it, it is, it, these are, this is so horrible, and I think, you know, it's, when Europeans do it, it's wrong, and, and it's because they're reduced to, but at any rate, it, it, it does, it, it just in terms of the meta, the ideas of, of, um, Again, uh, the 16th century medicine. That's, yes. That's they commit was for natural because there is a scene with beautiful so women in Portuguese are captured and then they fight very heroically and then they protest like children and they they could be a laughing you know you know yourself such a hero and now that you're captured what can you take it you know and enjoy the process of yes. which makes it sound like the Portuguese should be aware of yeah. 
local culture and you know just enjoy it. Yes. Well, here again, we don't know whether he's whether he's read this uh, this connection between heroism and uh, and acceptance of this particular death. Whether his report is is right, but it's it's interesting to to. to to see what how to see I'm actually trying to see how does this text working and what what are the silences in it? Yeah, just on this point of um, the beautiful body and the beauty and what they do. There's a woman Bernadette Boucher in the whole yeah. book on Debray's imagery and that um, the old women are depicted in this um, imagery from the 1590s, so it's a bit later than this, but the old women are depicted as either the griffins and the Greeks and they're depicted as tags and very much um, how beautiful they are is related to what parts of the body or what sort of food, whether it's liquid, whether it's cooked, whether it's raw, it just goes into that whole hmm. um, psychology of food and appearance of what you does she can, and does she, I mean, this is a book we, we just mentioned in the early lecture, but didn't really analyze. No, but we didn't talk about it. Yeah, Sauvage Saint-Pendant. They related to the Sauvage au Saint-Pendant, yeah, with the, which is a different title in English, yeah. Yeah, Iconic Conflict. Right, right, right. So other, other reactions? Uh, did you want to, Wendy, I was interested in Wendy's comment about the utopian things. This is one of the things she's, one of the themes in her dissertation, and, and, uh, I wondered if you wanted to share your uh, the deserto reading of this. And no, I'm sure it's really lovely to be sad, but uh, because I think it's really different in the environment and so, uh -huh. so much. But, um, and, that, and thinking about it in terms of translation theory so much. Um, I think when I was thinking about the whole construction of self and other, and, um, and this idea of wanting to make the strange familiar. Um, for me, when I, in the boy, turning of the voyage home, when I think about those things, I was trying to think about another way of modeling translation things rather than thinking about simply self and other. And what seemed to me interesting was, first of all, the way in which the, the body is itself a text, of course, and it's being inscribed, and that that is, in fact, their way of keeping their tradition and keeping their culture and, and how much more powerful can it be when you've got incisions in your own flesh that have been dived into. That's much more powerful than anything that could be written. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it, it's mutually reenacted and how I think the movie brings up very much that this language occurs within a ritual context and within a cultural context so that um, so the body is the body is the writing. Yeah, yeah and that, that that's another kind of purity. I mean, he doesn't come out and explicitly point to it, but implicitly, that I think is very evident in his dialogue. And I was interested then in how he, there were various train episodes going on, and about how written texts are ways of forming texts. So the fact that um, uh, Luc Gagnon has asked them to come and stay with him is a fact offered him an invitation. They come into the community and then he breaks really what was first established as a pact. You find all of a sudden that written, the written text offers really no guarantee that there's going to be a pact. Um, and that treachery is just as possible. And then if one contrasts that with the other episodes of trade and exchange between enemies and non enemies, that there's another kind, there's a, a constant comparison of various kinds of dialogues which has to do with the world of the other and the world of the self the bring them into dialogue. Um, the one, the one episode where they talk about how the enemies trade between themselves so that they, they come and they drop the item and as soon as the items are dropped in exchange then it's fair game and you can destroy the other person. That seemed to be interesting in terms of oral culture that you've got a moment of exchange that's marked where everybody's on the same ground and that it after that moment is over, everything is back to the way it was, and that it's much more transient, and that that might be tied to a kind of more oral tradition. Um, and the other moment of exchange where the, the children are pestering him for fish hooks, and they call him good, and he gives them fish hooks and bad as soon as he does it. should die, yeah. Yeah, and that, that ties back into the crochet um, 
reading of motivation that's so much tied to exchange, so that the translation of intention and motivation in language okay. is always tied into these other larger cultural forms of cycle of exchange and ritual. Okay. And so that, that the whole idea of writing and, and orality being these two totally removed culturally and technologically seems to be totally Thank you. Thank you. Yes, there's a lot of overlapping. Yeah. There's overlapping. It's interesting. Did you, by the way, on this question of exchange, we talked about uh, the issues of value and deception in the Cartier text. And uh, did you uh, did you see him, in, in other words, jipping the natives, so to speak, you know, giving them schlock, menu uh, menu shows, uh, which they don't. Did you feel that this was the same story? Was he? Did he seem to be telling the same story here? Or, uh, in, in that back and forth. I don't think so. I mean, how, how did you see? I mean, what are your thoughts? We hear from others too on that. But uh, we have several several episodes in in which uh, I mean, you you see all kinds of crossovers between. There, there are certain people who are there's all these fascinating people who I, I'm always so interested in. The the ten boys who are living in the villages and the. Uh, the Normans who are married with the women. So we have a lot of crossovers. But then we have situations in which uh, Delary describes how European things are being used and Tupi reactions to European things. And uh, just so I was just wondering, but remember we talked about that with the Cartier and uh, the statement, the scene in which uh, uh, Tanwani you know, uh, reveals unmasks. That. So what, what were your thoughts about that? Well, there are times when he simply just gives them gifts. And he, but he's also aware of the value of it because when he, he describes how he comes into the, the community with all these goods and he's asked to display them all. And he gives, he makes a show of giving the most valuable object so that generosity is demonstrated and displayed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, he wants food, food and, and shelter. And uh, uh, there are a couple of places where uh, he says, I gave him something and he was as pleased as if I had given him a golden chain. But uh, it isn't, it isn't, uh, again, remember it's a Protestant speaking too. Uh, so that, you know, the golden chain is, is part of somewhat deceptive, a whole deceptive value system anyway. Uh, so that, that moderates it. And it doesn't seem to be uh, as filled with the same kind of glee, you know. I think <laughs> it's, or, or, or sort of rubbing your hands, well, I really got away with that one. Uh, but rather, that's just the way he responded that way. And you, to translate this to a European, uh, and not particularly a European living in Geneva, <laughs> it would be as if he'd gotten a golden chain. I think he actually into more system of that. And he tries to make it more comfortable for the person at home. Because when he describes having these kind of garments, he says, well, they're as if they were valid. Mm -hmm. um, and so that he's constantly setting up systems of equivalence. Yeah. Where he can. And he really, I think the value that he places on the shield. I mean, uh, that, that to him, these objects become valuable because mm -hmm. he sees them in a cultural mm -hmm. But the uh, utopian element that I was thinking of is the way in which, and that has, I think, to do with what you were saying about the world itself and other get constructed, the way in which these little societies keep being, being built. So there's this society on um, the, the, the ship. Um, where there's a new system of authority and they're in fact you know, made to watch people be taken prisoner and have no say in it. Um, and then there's the new power when they arrive um, and then they enter into the culture. So they're constantly playing with the idea of who has the right to be the authority figure and how society should be run. And he's constantly defining his own position in terms of how much he can actually change government, the government. Um, and, and then this concern too with with how um, which is brought up in the introduction here with, with how society kind of totally builds a 
chaos and the description, the contrast between ritualized cannibalism and cannibalism at the time. Um, and the one hand, it's part of, in fact, if you argue, part of what you say, it's part of the utopian structure of the, the, the native community that it depends on this cannibalism. Kind of and in the other, it's become just this assigned to a Yeah. Yeah, and that the utopian dystopia that is in the same song. You know, your comment and, and uh, the other comments would lead us to to observe that this is a, is a book written by somebody who had no power, uh, except God, which is considerable. But, I mean, he was not in charge of anything. He's not in charge of anything. Uh, and he's there isn't much naming going on either. Uh, along, I mean, thinking of the other kind, the anti-conquest, Mary, Mary's anti-conquest narrative, where you also don't have power, but but uh, uh, the the uh, uh, and the one power that they might have had was to take it away from them immediately because they the missionary project was just removed. So there's there's uh, well, uh, any any other what happened to the lady? Does he go back to France? Yes. He go, well, he goes back and either goes to Geneva for a time, or did he, did, did, oh, Ville Gagnon, oh, Ville Gagnon, I'm sorry. Uh, did he become a Catholic? Uh, he, he, stay, he is a Catholic, and uh, he uh, has a, an undistinguished uh, end of life. Exactly, I actually was uh, eager to look up more about him, uh, because according to Watley's uh, comments, uh, uh, Delaney may have been harder on, on him. I don't think that it's true that there was just a mis she actually uses the word there may have just been a misunderstanding. It doesn't sound quite right. Uh, there's a very, very active pamphlet literature, pamphlet war, uh, about the whole episode and a and, uh, great deal of hostility and bitterness. And, and the, uh, so, so he does return to the Catholic Church and may have even gone back to the Knights of Malta. Uh, but his uh, does not have an important political future. He lives for quite a while uh, after we do. But I'm uh, sorry that it, I didn't actually have, have a chance to look up a lot about him. Uh, and uh, just to to see whether there's a text by him as opposed to the pamphlet or, or, or about him. Uh, well, any other just final thoughts? Or just from those who haven't had a chance to just speak up a little? Or it's it's a kind of place that when he's sailing Brazil, he doesn't share the culture of the ship mm -hmm. when they're robbing the Portuguese and the Spaniards. Right. An example I did of, he, he, he disapproves. The, the culture yeah. of the people who only sit. Yeah, the Catholic, the sailors who are Catholic sailors on top of her. That is, they're French, but they're, but they're, but he seems to suggest that if they were good Protestant sailors, they might not. Although, <laughs> be such, <laughs> so, like whoever has the bigger gun is going to be pirates, yeah. yeah. Uh, but there is one point when he does talk, because you remember when they cross the equator, they have this celebration, and it's a Catholic type of celebration, and the idea is that if they were good Protestant sailors, they wouldn't be. They describe the same process of crossing the equator. Yes. Oh, they still, I think they do it till this day. It's, it's, it happens. And, and moreover, Protestants, especially in England, do do festive things. But this particular period, and even sometimes Protestants not in England, do festive things. But it's just this particular period, uh, a strict Calvinist minister uh, would not want to have uh, carnivalist things happening of this particular. I mean, he'd have everybody down on their knees thanking God and singing psalms. We are now crossing the <laughs> the equator. Uh, so that, that would be his take on it. Well, David, you, you come at all of this from from your background on religion. Have you any particular things that you wanted to would want to call our attention to? And well, I guess my hair is thinking perhaps in terms of cannibalism, mm -hmm. um, especially with how that seems to be so abject or something. I think that becomes kind of a moment of something. But in terms of reading the uh, religion, I don't know how to take that as far as a but he claims to have seen some of it. Uh, 
he claims to have seen, to, to have seen, to have seen some of it. Uh, so what, how would you, what would you want to do with this? Uh, well, nothing in particular. Yeah. But quite apart from whether he's seen it, I mean, in terms of what, what argument it makes. That's, uh, how, how would you want to, to, how would you want to connect it with the idea of sacrifice? Well, I think uh, it is, I think it is uh, a direct is he seeing it, or from the point of view of the, the two pieces? Or, I think from either point of view, more particularly So, so that the two pieces warriors are thinking of sacrificing themselves. You mean when they? No, uh, more of a sacrifice of the other The, the, uh, uh, I mean, the, the Margria, or the Tupis if they were with the Mar Margria, Margias, and the Margias if they were with the Tupis, uh, it would be the... It's the perp perpetration of the outside, that I think has to be quite some sort of sacrifice, whether that mm -hmm. goes as far as That's the question that I would have, but, but, uh, I don't know enough about different forms of sacrifice. Uh, I mean, you, you do eat the, I get no, were sacrificial victims, um, human victims eaten? Animal sacrifice, animals are. But I don't know about the Aztecs, but anyway. Uh, well that, and then with, I mean, from his point of view, the way it would come in uh, would be not only attack and on transubstantiation, but on the idea of the sacrifice of the mass, which was the other thing that Protestants, it was the double attack, you know, the, the sacrifice, and, yeah. and the real presence, and the yeah. 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 It's a, that's a, a good episode and one to warn us about the question that, that uh, Alberto and, and David have both raised about, about not whether historians, ethnographers have found out that he was observing right, because, you know, the, and they have, I mean, people could recognize the animals, but let's leave that aside, but, but about how much he was capable of I mean, understanding, you know, uh, uh, I mean, it might have been sort of lucky, lucky some of the time. Because that episode, I mean, he was only there for 10 months. And um, some of the time he visited, he was obviously very good at languages. He cares about languages. So he's got the skills. But it's true that, that uh, uh, it's only the two months that he's really close to them. Uh, and uh, he's still depending on Norman translators. So there, there is a limit. I mean, we have to always remember that in terms of, of uh, uh, the world that he creates, the picture that he creates, that it's, it, it must, it, in part, is going to come from situations in which they're making gestures at him and he just, uh, and, and can't make himself understood or they can't make themselves, or they misunderstand each other. And then this also brings us back to the report on religion and his not bringing in the myths. I've suggested reasons that Protestant sensibility might have made, made it hard for him to even listen to some of the things he might have been said, but he may not have even understood what was being said because of the language, uh, uh, his own limits uh, on that. Well, just what about, just the final, just the query, just, what about the disserto? Uh, how did people, uh, just, did you? I found it really it interesting. Helpful? I mean, this is an introduction to him, or maybe you knew him already? Yeah, no, no, I didn't. Um, I really enjoyed his, his discussion around speech and writing, especially because I did a course with Dr. Chamberlain last year, oh, yeah. which is which is also on, on 
focused on the issues of, of territory and poetry and language and, and how to map that out. And this, this is a really interesting perspective on that. Uh, do you have a question? I didn't you want to the last part, the dessert, the last part is, yeah, I, I should have maybe mentioned that before when I was just, he sometimes, or maybe I did last week, but he so, sometimes, I mean, it's just affirmed that, he sometimes is difficult to understand. Uh, and I think the last part was uh, difficult for me, certainly, for the last, very last couple of weeks. When he, when I, I didn't really see why, I mean, in what way Larry could have been describing um, these animals or plants that he had been seeing in America. I mean, he would definitely, he had to be doing kind of like that kind of background. Yeah, he because he, what, because what could he use? Yeah. He's, he's not a naturalist, so he doesn't have things to readily fall back on. Yeah. I understand that he could have been. But I think, yeah. I, I think maybe uh, uh, that, that he's, uh, that he does too, as I'm thinking again of that turn, uh, he does too, that he, uh, uh, on the one hand, sees him as part of the, uh, the typical European project, project, and on the other hand, does see him as, in part, doing his best. <laughs> Rather than just seeing always on one side of the line, you know, just redoing it, reproducing this over and over again. But, uh, at any rate, I hope uh, some of you will want to use Deserto. I mean, he's, uh, read some of his other things, and as he may relate to uh, other projects that you might have. Yes. Well, there's going to be a book out soon. Uh, uh, just to learn about him, well, or start. to just start. Uh, I think I think the practices of everyday life might be a, a, a nice book to start with. Uh, I've got actually happen to have right here a complete bibliography if anybody wants to just just uh, except for the.